So, good morning everyone. We are the reporters for this day. <clears throat> And our sele- uh, selected country is Singapore. Singapore. A highly developed country in highway and transport. I am Miro Danugo. And I am Queenie J. De La Cruz. So first, uh, let's take a look about the overview of this report. First, the location, demography, tourist attraction, achievements, <coughs> development of roads, transportation in Singapore. So location of Singapore. It is a small island in Southeast Asia whose capital takes the same name. It is located at the southern tip of the Malayan Peninsula with a total land area of 640 km squared. <clears throat> As you can see in the picture, the green color here is the Singapore. So the upper part of the map of uh, this picture is the Malaysia. Uh, way back um 1963, Mal- uh, Singapore is part of Malaysia, but Malaysia kicked out Singapore or sep- uh, Singapore separated from Malaysia to become independent and sovereign state. Next is the demography of the Singapore. So, when I say demography, it is the study of statistics such as births, deaths, income, or incidence of disease which illustrates the changing structure of human population. So, as of 2020, Singapore has a uh, total population of 5,850,342 with ethnic Chinese, 76.2 of the citizen population, Malays with 15%, and ethnic Indians are 7.4%. Chinese Singaporeans make up of the majority of the population. So when uh, next is a uh, multicultural country. So when we say multicultural, Singapore different ethnic group coming together as one united without giving up their cultural heritage. Singapore population is equivalent to 0.08 percent of the total world population. So. Singapore is ranked number 114 in the list of countries with population. So, like I said a while ago, uh, the population of Singapore as of 2020 is 5,850,342. So, most of the population in is urban. So, the statistic represent the urban population in Singapore which is the number of people living in the urban conditions. In 2020, the urban populations in Singapore stood approximately 5.9 million. Average population density is 8,358 per square kilometer. So, as you can see here in the map, North East Singapore has become the most populated area due to the governmental or initiated development plan to relocate or more Singaporean family. Next is the tourist attraction that we uh, can see in Singapore. First is the Resorts World of Sentosa. So, Resorts World of Sentosa is an integrated resort on the island of Sentosa of southern coast of Singapore. The key attraction include one of the Singapore's two casinos, a Universal Studios, Theme Park, Adventure Cove Water Park, and Sea Aquarium, which includes the world's second largest aquarium. Next is the Singapore Flyer. So, Singapore Flyer is a giant observation wheel at downtown core Singapore. It opened in 2008 with construction having taken about two and a half years. Next is the Orchard Road. Orchard Road, often known as colloquially as Orchard, is a major 2.5 kilometer long road in central area of Singapore. 
a famous tourist attraction, it is an upscale shopping area of Singapore with numerous internationally renowned department stores. Next is the Clark Quay. Clark Quay is a historical riverside quay in Singapore, located within the Singapore River Planning Area. Next is the Raffles Hotel. It is a colonial-style luxury hotel in downtown core district of Singapore. It was established by American hotelers, the Sarkis Brothers, in 1887. So, next is the Garden by the Bay. So, Garden by the Bay is a nature park spanning 101 hectares in the central region of Singapore, adjacent to the Marina Reserva. The park consists of three water front gardens, which is the Bay South Garden, Bay East Garden, and Bay Central Garden. So, what are the achievements of, of Singapore? So, Singapore has the best country for living in Asia and the rank number 26 globally. Next, top 10 most expensive cities in the world. Number 3 in the world in the development of information technology. Global leader when it comes to computerization. So, why is Singapore is very expensive or the prices there is, or the product is high? So, Singapore is the one of the most attractive cities in the world for foreign investors and multinational companies. The influx of so many foreigners is further driving the demand of properties and contributing to the rising cost of properties in Singapore. So, in terms of a technology with modern infrastructure now cited as the import, most important factor in enabling the city to become a technology innovation center, Singapore was noted for its advanced IT infrastructure, strong government support, and intellectual property laws, and for its deep talent pool. Another achievement is uh, Singapore has the best medicine in public health care in Asia. Singapore economy is one of the most stable country in the world. <clears throat> because uh, the Singapore economy is one of the most stable in the world is because with no foreign debt, high government revenue as a consistently positive surplus. The Singapore economy is mainly driven by exports, financial service, tourism, and world's busiest cargo seaport. This seaport is a fully urbanized city-state with about 10% of its cars land already being used of the road transportation. So let's now proceed on the development of roads in Singapore. Modern Singapore was founded in 1918 by Sir Stamford Raffles, who also authored the first road network plan of the settlement. Sir Stamford Raffles was a British statesman and lieutenant governor of the Dutch East Indies, who is best known for his founding of modern Singapore and the Strait Settlement. So we we prepare a video presentation about the development of the road in the Singapore. Did you know up to 12% of Singapore's land area is taken up by roads? That's over 3,300 kilometers worth of asphalt concrete. Total number of vehicles on our roads? 
over 900,000 and rising. Even as we find ways to optimize our land use in terms of road planning, we cannot expand our road networks indefinitely. This is a situation of scarcity, limited space for roads but ever increasing demand from motorists wishing to drive their cars on the roads. So how does Singapore ensure that traffic doesn't grind to a halt? How do we efficiently allocate a scarce resource which is road space? Traffic congestion imposes negative externalities on many parties, not just drivers stuck in a jam. If you recall, a negative externality is the adverse effect or the cost on third parties who are not directly involved in the activity that causes this effect. What do we mean? Let's say Sean is on his way to meet his girlfriend Cindy for a date. He considers his private costs and benefits from driving to meet his date. Now imagine many more drivers making such decisions at the same time. En route, Sean gets stuck in traffic. As a result, he arrives an hour late. Now, this puts Cindy in a terrible mood for the rest of the date. As you can see, congestion is a negative externality which causes problems such as longer traveling time and disruption to planned activities for all. The time lost in congestion leads to less time for family and leisure and lower productivity as workers arrive late in the office. Business costs will increase. For instance, delivery companies will require more resources because of the longer time needed for deliveries. Furthermore, as congestion slows the movement of goods and services, it adds to the price of products and reduces the competitiveness of businesses. In addition, fuel costs will also increase as car engines continue to run while cars are at a standstill. And this results in engines being used inefficiently. Congestion also causes noise and air pollution. And ultimately, congestion causes detrimental effect on the productivity for the whole economy. Everyone loses from a lower standard of living. Mitigation of congestion requires that both the supply and demand sides of the problem be addressed. One way of managing traffic congestion is by making car ownership less attractive. How? With taxes and other upfront costs like the additional registration fee or ARF. Introduced in the 1970s, the ARF is a fee based on a percentage of a car's open market value. It is payable upon the registration of a vehicle. In other words, it puts an additional cost to owning a car. With the higher prices of cars that consumers had to pay, cars became less attractive. The Total number of also operate the first one for. Don't for his
Also, I'm oh, sorry, the first Nowadays, Our ownership F is a fee based to O Singapore is attractive. We inter so okay. So the video said uh says that the num there are the number of cars there in Singapore is very high. So the video says that uh Singapore has more uh cars and their alternative solution to this is that uh, the price of the the cars is they will increase the price of the cars so that less people will will uh, buy cars and they will promote the public transportation okay next uh, to continue In 1924, the Singapore Johar Causeway was open to traffic, forming a permanent link with the Malayan Peninsula. The Singapore Johar Causeway is a 1.5 kilometer causeway that links the city of Johor Bahru in Malaysia across the Straits of Johor to the town of Woodlands in Singapore. It serves as a road and rail link as well as water pipeline between the two countries. And over the next 40 years, road expansion continued, interrupted only by the Second World War. By 1971, the first long-term development was drawn which incorporated a comprehensive land use and transport study that foresaw the construction of a, of a 150-kilometer system of expressways. Nowadays, the expressways of Singapore is a network of controlled access highways. When we say controlled access highway, it is a highway designed to allow the traffic to safely travel at fast speeds with all traffic entering and exiting the highway by ramps. All of them are dual carriageways, which is a class of highway with carriageways for traffic traveling in opposite directions, separated by essential reservation with grade separate, separated access. They usually have three to four lanes in each direction. Although there are two lane carriageways at many expressway intersections and five lane carriageways in some places. Next slide. Okay. On the slide, we can see the routes of the main expressways throughout Singapore and how these expressways look like. So, these expressways and highways allow motorists to travel quickly from one area to another and provide a smooth traffic flow. Next slide. The common modes of transportation in Singapore are the MRT, buses, and, taxi and taxis. MRT is a heavy rail rapid transit system that constitutes the bulk of the rail railway network in Singapore. While buses, on the other hand, provide are provided by two operators, the SBS Transit and SMRT. Both operators have their own network of routes and bus interchanges. While in taxi in Singapore. Taxis are regulated and are have the most regulated system in the world. 
Next slide. Moreover, the government continues, continuously expands their public transport network. In 2019, Singapore's rail network was 230 kilometers. Hopping onto a public transportation to reach different parts of Singapore get even more convenient as 1,000 new buses and 80 new bus routes have been introduced from 2012 to 2017. And 99 new MRT chains were added from 2015 to 2019. As a result, waiting times for trains and buses have been reduced during peak hours. Also, more than 200 kilometers of covered walkways have been built. Covered walkways help commuters walk to their homes, schools, and nearby amenities like bus interchanges, rain or shine. For the accessibility and safety of the public, cyclists are able to move around with ease using dedicated cycling paths in nine housing board towns or subsidized public housing for Singaporeans to separate cyclists from vehicles on the road. In addition, priority queues help seniors and PWDs board buses and chains before others. Priority queues were implemented at all MRT stations. Those in wheelchairs can safely board and shovel in MRT and LRT trains. In an effort to improve accessibility, all buses are wheelchair-friendly. Families with young children can shovel fast free as a solar restraint system is installed on all wheelchair accessible buses. Thus, journeys is more inclusive and barrier free to facilitate transport for all ages. Okay. So, why is Singapore's highway and transport highly developed? The public transport system benefits all commuters, and the government is taking steady steps towards city's goals to keep Singapore moving. With a growing population and over 14 million journeys per day by 2020, Singapore has anticipated the future transport challenges and through innovative use of technology and policy decisions has planned to ensure that a small city-state meets the needs of the population and that the infrastructure is fit for purpose. Singapore's intelligent transport system incorporates a range of smart transportation technologies. These intelligent solutions allow Singapore to enjoy one of the lowest congestion rates anywhere in the world for a city its size. Singapore offers a highly integrated and sophisticated transport system that appears to achieve its purpose of providing an affordable, sustainable, and well-organized mass transport system. Thank you for listening, and that ends our reporting.